Good morning. Let's tackle a problem dealing with center of mass. I'm Gabriel Mel, and this is Physics with the Experts, which I am. Now, <clears throat> every year in Greenland, there is a four-way tug-of-war in which each person pulls on the rope in one of the four cardinal directions on frictionless ice. Bjorg and Fjord, who stand in the east and west directions respectively, are both 100 kilograms. Jorgisborg pulls in the northern direction and is 120 kilograms, while Fjordis Nord pulls towards the south and is 80 kilograms. If they all begin pulling themselves towards each other by walking their hands up the rope at the same time, where do they meet? Okay. So it's hard to keep track of where everyone is. So, as with any physics problem, our first step is going to be draw a sketch. Now here we are. <clears throat> uh, big sketch. I hope it can fit in the uh, <clears throat> camera. We have 120 kilograms in the north, 100 kilograms in the east, 100 kilograms in the west, and 80 kilograms here in the south. As with any tug of war, they all start a distance L from the center, and they're all going to be begin pulling and walking towards <clears throat> each other. So, the first thing we should take note of is that this is a closed system. The sum of the forces is equal to zero. There is no force that can be exerted in the plane of the ice because the ice is perfectly frictionless as the problem stated. What that means is the acceleration by Newton's second law has to be zero, the acceleration in the center of mass. <clears throat> Meaning the initial velocity of the center of mass has to be the final velocity of the center of mass. Acceleration is zero. And since the initial velocity of the center of mass is equal to the final velocity of the center of mass is equal to zero, we know the center of mass has to stay in the same place. The initial center of mass is equal to the finer center of mass. And this is something <clears throat> you already know. If no forces act on a system, then its center of mass cannot move. If you keep your coordinate system centered at the center of mass, it does not move. <clears throat> um, and notice here I've used vectors to denote position. This is a position vector, which includes all the relevant coordinates. So if we were talking about three-dimensional space, this position vector would involve three spatial coordinates. <clears throat> now let's find that x center, sorry, let's find the center of mass, the position. Just to help, I've reproduced the sketch in a smaller version right here. Now the x coordinate of the center of mass at the beginning, <clears throat> notice 1 and 3 are centered at 0 and so they contribute nothing to the x-coordinate of the center mass. The only masses that contribute to the x-coordinate of the center mass are 2 and 4. So using the formula for center of mass, the x-coordinate initially will be x2, m2, plus x4, m4, over all the mass, m2 plus m4. <clears throat> and in the same way, 4 and 2 will not contribute at all to the y center of mass because they're both at position y equals 0. So we only need to worry about 1 and 3. It would be y1, m1, plus y3, m3, over n1, plus m3. Now, we have our expressions for the center of mass. Let's substitute in our known values. The x center of mass should be, well, x2, the x coordinate of 2, is going to be positive L, times m2 is 100. So here we go, L times 100, plus x4 the position of mass 4 is negative L, M4 is 100. M2 is 100, M4 is 100. <clears throat> yes, it's getting a little bit hairy. Now, for the Y, Y1's position is positive L, and Y1's mass is 120. Y3's Y position is negative L, and its mass, M3, is equal to 80. So now we substitute that in, m1 is 120, m3 is 80. So now we've substituted in values. It was a little bit complicated, but it's quite straightforward. We've substituted in all the values we know into the expressions we came up for the center of mass. Now, not surprisingly, in the x direction, we get 100L up here, minus 100L, it's going to be 0. And that makes sense because our system is symmetric in the x direction. It's 100 kilograms over here, 100 kilograms over here. So it's totally symmetric in the x direction, not surprising <clears throat> that our x value should be 0. The y, we get 120L minus 80L over 120 plus 80. Simplifying gives us 0.2L. 
So the position of our center of mass is going to be at x coordinate 0, y coordinate point 2 L. <clears throat> so now we found the initial center of mass. <clears throat> but if you remember from before, we found that the initial center of mass has to be equal to the final center of mass, no matter what the men do to move themselves around, because as a system, they cannot move their center of mass. <clears throat> now, you can imagine, as the men pull each other towards each other, they're going to get closer and closer, and their center of mass is going to be kind of squeezed between the men. The center of mass will always stay between the men. As they come closer and closer, they'll converge on the center of mass as they move all towards it. <clears throat> so their final center of mass, once they've met on the ice, is going to be, the final position once they've met on the ice, is going to be the center of mass. So their final meeting location has to be the, the location of the original center of mass. <clears throat> to overview, the men start out with their weight distributed in this kind of compass rows, and their center of mass is some place. What we want to know is, where do they end up once they all meet? Well, when they meet, they're all squeezing the center of mass between them, and they'll all converge on the center of mass. And it cannot move from the beginning because there are no forces, so it has to be the location of the original initial center of mass, which is 0, 0.2L. So that is our final answer. Thank you for watching.